Recording in progress. Good morning to our Good morning to our esteemed participants, ladies and gentlemen. Distinguished guests and also our keynote speakers. I extend my warmest regards and wish you excellent health and enthusiasm today. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Shalom, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebajikan. First of all, I would like to praise God because of His mercy, we can gather again in this opportunity. On behalf of the organizers, welcome back again with me, Nurma, as the Master of Ceremony for today, for these eight days of the 7th International Summer Course Program with the theme Managing Forest Landscapes and Forest-Dependent Communities to Bridge the Future, Learning Across Governance Regimes. Commence our activities for today. We have a session, which will be presented in 60 minutes, followed by Q&A session in 30 minutes. Before we're gonna proceed to the first agenda, allow me to read an agenda for today. So the first topic of this day is about the development of IKN Forest City as an urban forest landscape integration, the critical factors. Then we will have a coffee break in 30 minutes. Continue to the second topic, which is applying reduced impact logging in harvesting system and quantifying carbon footprint of wood industry. After that, we are going to have a lunchbox session until 1 p.m. Then we're going to continue the last topic, which is implementation of intensive silviculture in Indonesia, an approach of tree improvement practice. And last but not least, our agenda of this day, we're going to play games with forest management games. Without further ado, our first topic, which is forest protection and climate change. Sorry, without further ado, which is uh, our first topic, the, the development of IKN Forest City as an urban forest landscape integration, the critical factors, which will be presented by Dr. Ari Susanti from Faculty of Forestry UGM and moderated by Mr. Muhammad Abdul Rahman Subrata. Before we are really going to proceed to our first topic of this day, allow me to read a brief introduction of Dr. Ari Susanti. Dr. Ari has expertise in forest science, computer, and biometrics forest management. And she was studied in the Social Geography Planning Utrecht University Faculty of Geoscience, the Netherlands, with the thesis Oil Palm Expansion in Ria Province, Indonesia, Serving People, Planet, and Provid. Without further ado, Mr. Abdul, our moderator of this day, of this first topic, the time is yours. Okay. Thank you to our Master of Ceremony, Mbak Nurma, for giving me the floor. Greetings to all ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the first session of the day for the Forest Summer Course, University of Gajah Mada, with the grand theme of managing forestry landscape and forest-dependent communities to bridge the future learning across governance regimes. Before we start, uh, I think you still remember me. Uh, my name is Dul. I'm from the Social, Social Forestry and Economic Laboratory, Forest Management Department, University of Gajah Mada. And today, I will be the moderator for this session. Ladies and gentlemen, for your information, Indonesia will have a new nation capital at Borneo Island called Ibu Kota Negara or IKN. And the name is the name is Nusantara. The national capital will be located in east of Borneo province. The uniqueness of the new capital is because the concept itself. Nusantara will bring forest city concept as a tagline and to show Indonesia government commitment and rest to support 
Sustainable Development Goals and National Determination Contribution. And again, uh, trade-offs between ecology and citizen interest always interest to discuss. And how to reduce the trade-offs between the ecology and citizen interest in the veracity will be managed. This is will be super challenge to be manifested. Urban forest landscape seems to be a win-win solution to reduce the trade-offs between these issues. It is now my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker in this beautiful morning together with us, the expert of IKN Resources. She is the member of International Consortium Research of Forest City. Dr. Ari Susanti from the University of Gajah Mada will give us an incredible lecture with excellent topic of the development of IKN Forest City as an urban forest landscape integration, the critical factors. To Dr. Ari Susanti, you have 60 minutes to present your paper presentation followed by 30 minutes Q&A after. And for your information, guys, in this session, it's a little bit different with the sessions before because you can give Dr. Ari questions if you need more information on the presentation. Without further ado, Dr. Ari Susanti, the floor is yours. Thank you for the introduction, Mas Dul. I'm sorry, my voice. I just arrived back from IKN, from the Nusantara, two days ago. And yeah, and yeah, the 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 pollution was so heavy because of this development, and I got <clears throat> a lot of dust. And yeah, sorry for my voice. <clears throat> oh. Uh, my name is Ari. I am a lecturer, researcher in the Faculty of Forestry here in Gajah Mada University. And yeah, I'm in the forest management department. And yeah, I know that you have been here for already one week or more. Yeah, one week and some days. Hope you enjoy. And how was your weekend? Yeah, can you tell me something about your weekend? Where where have you been? Yeah, we went to uh Kali Kuning on our first day. Uh Yawanagama. We overnight there. Yeah, we learned a few things. Not a few, a lot actually. <laughs> yeah, and new things as well. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. My name is Elisa. I'm from UMS University of Malaysia Sabah. Yeah, Malaysia. <laughs> In Wanagama, okay. Um, good morning. My name is Alex from the same university as she is in. Um, one of the things that I learned in, in Wanagama Forest back in uh, last weekend, uh, there are lots about um about forest product, non-timber forest products such as honey and also um, making a volatile oil out of eucalyptus oil, uh, eucalypt, can you put, uh, so, you put oil, uh, you put leaf. So apart from that, yeah, we do enjoy, um, we learned the history about uh, how the Wanagama forest was established from a bare land, like limestone. So yeah, there are lots of um there are lots of things that we learn actually, especially if there are some type of the the tree species that weren't like planted there, but eventually they just grew there after that. Yeah, we had lots of fun. One more to add. Yeah. Uh, first day I'm go to Yang aja nggak usah dikasih. Yang lo gimana? Intinya setelah aku baca itu, aku tahu kamu ya memang kamu udah inilah udah udah berpikiran bulat lah. Kamu udah yakin ya memang mau mau divorce gitu ya. Terus jadi aku pikir nggak usah bikin-bikin perjanjian mau perjanjian apa? Then 
and the next day, the second day, I'm go to learn about non for a eh, non timber. Yes, about a uh, oh. essential oil and have a a B. Yes, B how and in the afternoon, I'm learn how. Oh, so a uh, program, soy program, yes, and teach, yes, and we learn about a uh, lock and stone, yes, thank you. We enjoy, yes, Thailand, and and the last one, I go to the beach, yeah, <laughs> have a, <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. So I hope that will give you more energy for today. <laughs> yeah? Or you are too tired today. <laughs> no, I think give more energy. Yeah? And yeah. Okay. So I will start. <clears throat> hmm? Sorry, we have a connection problem here. <laughs> Good morning for the audience online. I hope you can follow us here. Or can you see the screen or? Can somebody respond online? Can you see the, my screen now? Yes? Okay. So we can continue. This is more or less the outline of my presentation. So I will talk about the research project uh, and the consortium working in IKN. And second is about the relocation of the capital city and its complexity and some concept involved in this research and method and the critical factor for sustainable uh, landscape transformation. And yeah, how we can promote the sustainable landscape transformation in the IKN city of Nusantara, the new capital city. <coughs> so our research project and consortium. Uh, so our research project. This is a title of our research project in the in the in the IKN. So following frontiers of the forest city to sustainable and inclusive urbanization in Kalimantan and beyond. So here we this consortium uh, consists of Indonesian institution and the Netherlands institution and. We have UGM. In UGM, we have Faculty of Forestry and Faculty of Geography and Utrecht uh, University from uh, 
the Netherlands and Labung Mangkurat University from uh, South Kalimantan also the IHE Delft also in the Netherlands those are the universities involved in uh, oh no we have no we have another university ITK Institut Teknologi Kalimantan in Balikpapan and we also involve uh, local government uh, is Kalimantan government through uh, the research agency the research agencies and we also work with the national agencies that is the peatland and mangrove restoration agencies and we also work with the Royal Haskoning. This is a company working on the impact assessment mostly. And here the NWO and Ristec Print, they are the funding agency for, for our uh, project. So NWO is the uh, research con national research council in the Netherlands and Ristec Print is the national research council in Indonesia. So we are big, yeah, um, involve uh, many institutions, universities, and private and also government agencies. So, uh, yeah. And the main objective of this research is to establish a framework to keep on following frontiers of urbanization in East Kalimantan to achieve ecological sustainability, disaster, disaster risk reduction, and socioeconomic inclusion. And we have specific objective because our consortium consists of, uh, let's say, universities or research component and uh, local government and uh, also private sector. So we have three specific objective for a specific stakeholders so as a university uh, for the university of course we have to generate knowledge on processes and impacts that the main project and its frontier create beyond the plan project area why we focus on the beyond because the plan area they already calculate mostly most of the time on the plan area they plan they calculate they estimate the impact and everything but then beyond the plan area is often uh, yeah they don't plan and the second specific objective is to develop capacity of local researchers and citizens by strengthening existing research infrastructure this is especially for uh, local government because they are the person who will be there forever so they so by developing the capacity and uh, research infrastructure we hope that they can uh, follow and they can uh, adapt or do something with all these impacts and let's say unintended impact especially beyond the plan area and they know what what should we do and yeah improve their capacity to adapt and to respond with the impact and establish a multi-stakeholder platform to co-design tools to assess impact and suggest short and long-term solution to ensure sustainability and inclusivity of plan and unplanned urbanization <coughs> here we work with students. So student is an important component in this research, uh, especially uh, this uh, is through the KKN. KKN is like a community service program because UGM is community service program. So we send students to the field for two months and then they work with the community and they, uh, yeah, they try to understand what the uh, uh, what the community need, uh, and they then 
create the programs based on the uh, needs of the community. So in a, each group, it consists of, uh, I think, around 15 to 20 or maximum 30 uh, students from different faculties in UGM. And they will stay there, stay with the community in the house of the community. And then they work with them and yeah, uh, create program for two months, for example. And then, uh, yeah, and execute the program together with the community. And I think starting next year, we are going to have like a collaborative community services, not only students from UGM, different faculties in UGM, but also with students from ITK, Institute Technology Kalimantan in Balikpapan, and student from uh, Mulawarman in Samarinda, and probably also from uh, ULM, from Labung Mangkurat University. Okay, question? No? Clarification? No, okay, I will continue. So this is the project structure. We have, uh, yeah, because the, the objective is big. So we have, uh, we divide the activities into seven work packages. <clears throat> so work package one and two, we work together. It is more on the meso scale. This is, uh, uh, we are working in the, like uh, the landscape scale. Uh, looking at the uh, biophysical and uh, yeah, uh, for us is, for example, work package one, uh, spatial impact mapping, mapping of the uh, the whole things, yeah, like uh, how the master plan, uh, whether the master plan are, uh, yeah, to assess the the current master plan whether it is uh, according to the carrying capacity or something like that and work package two is more the impact to forest ecosystem especially uh, we look at the mangrove sorry for work package one it is uh, managed by uh, Universitas Lambung Mangkurat in uh, South Kalimantan and work package two by me here in the Faculty of Forestry. And book package three, it is more socioeconomic, land use and livelihood impact mapping. Dr. Elisa Purta from uh, Gajah Mada University, Faculty of Geography. And this will uh, have, uh, yeah. So work package four is uh, more the, Work package four and safe. It is later more uh, about the synthesis, and work package six and five. This is or oh, five is for following is investment in the frontiers and urban politics. Work package six is uh, about the water. So this is multidisciplinary because there is social, there is biophysical, there is. Uh, political and there is uh, uh, investment economic aspect in this research. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Questions? No. Continue. Okay. The relocation of Indonesian capital city and its complexity. So here I will uh, who have been to Jakarta? Someone has, oh, okay. And who has been to Kalimantan? Okay. So you know how, how far is it? Yeah, this is more or less. We move, Jakarta is the current capital city. And then we move to East Kalimantan here. Uh, this is more or less two and a half hours flying so 
yeah, around 13,000 kilometer, something like that. So we moved the capital city from, from Jakarta to, oh no, we are moving, not yet move. <laughs> from Jakarta to East Kalimantan here. Uh, the location is between Balikpapan and Samarinda. So uh, when I first came there in 2021, no, I was there 1990 something, but after the the appointment of the new capital city uh, uh, area to become the new capital city, I first came there in 2021. It was still nothing. But the last week, it was like, oh, development is everywhere. Like uh, road, toll road is already there. And uh, yeah, uh, new business like uh, food stall and catering services and hotels, housing is everywhere. Incredible in two years. The one, oh yeah. The name of the new capital city is Ibu Kota Nusantara or IKN, as mentioned before. And but why the government is moving the, the capital city from Jakarta to East Kalimantan. There are push factor, push factor from Jakarta pushing this uh, 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 policy. Yeah. The, the population of Jakarta is like 20 million in the in the day and like 15 million in the night. Why it is different? Because people are commuting to work in Jakarta from the neighborhood region like uh, Bogor. Uh, Bogor, Tangerang, Bekasi, Depok, something like that. And Jakarta is, it has still local, national, and international affair over there. So the local government has office in Jakarta, national government has office in Jakarta, and many international offices like UN and all these international organizations offices are in Jakarta. So it is too much. And everything is centered there. And of a population, yeah, this is uh, uh, yeah, with population 16,000 population per kilometer square. I don't know where are you from? Big cities or small cities or I will ask someone. Where are you from? Uh, hello, uh, I'm from Japan. At Fukuoka City. Yeah. Uh, Maybe it's big city in Japan, but yeah. Uh, yeah. One hundred. One point million, yeah. So, so yeah, maybe smaller than Jogja, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the because now uh, the urbanization is everywhere, yeah. But then, yeah, also in Jakarta, 
And Jakarta also experienced environmental degradation intensified by climate change. This uh, uh, annual flooding, inundation, subsidence, pollution. Yeah. <clears throat> like at the big cities. Yeah. So this is the picture of the last, uh, this famous everywhere, I think, the last flood in 2013. One of the biggest. <clears throat> and the pull factors, that is the why Kalimantan is attracted to be the new capital city. Because, yeah, it is uh, yeah, considered to be low disaster risk geographically, yeah. And and it is located in the center of Indonesia. And then uh, it become the catalyst uh, for uh, economic growth in outer Java, outside Java, so other island, and to minimize the disparities. And the location. The exact location of the new capital city is in the Penajam Pasir Utara and Kutai Kartanegara Regency, which is in between the existing corridor between Balikpapan and Sarinda. So it is uh, the let's say the infrastructure to support the development, especially in the early stage of the development, is available there in Samarinda and in Balikpapan. And it is uh, yeah, secured state land of uh, 180 hectares because it is uh, state forest land with the license, with the forest plantation area right now. And Later, it will be converted into the new capital city. And it is expected also the new capital city will attract a lot of migrants to divert the national migration flow to Kalimantan. Instead of people going to Java, it is expected that people are going to, the, to Kalimantan and neighboring areas, Sulawesi and other areas. Questions? No? Okay. So this is the future image of the new capital city. In 2030 plus plus. Right now it's not yet like this. And it is branded as smart forest city, transformative city inspirative inclusive city yeah but the uh, yeah it is the promise but the question here why we are doing research over there is how about the plan at, how about the the area beyond the plan area how to govern the frontiers and the environment social impacts of this large scale development. Why? Any ideas? Why people are concerning about the uh, development of the new large scale project, new capital city in Kalimantan? Opinion would be because they already saw the impact of the development in Jakarta, so it's bet. Of course, they want to avoid the same consequences, so it's better to plan earlier before they proceed with the development in, of the new capital city. Yeah, that's all. Other opinion? Oh, sorry. Um from Thailand. In my opinion, I think 
uh, in Shakata and uh, doesn't uh, not have more space for for uh, building something or more develop. Yeah, that's why we move they, they move the capital city. Yeah. No? Okay. Maybe you I don't. I'm from Cameroon. Yeah. So usually why people are afraid is because uh usually urbanization is like uh threatening the environment and biodiversity. And we all know that Borneo Island and is a, a biodiversity hotspot, then people they are fear that. The development, the new capital. We just transfer the problem from Jakarta to a new place. But to have been there, uh, I've visited several places in East Kalimantan, Samarinda, Kutai Kartanegara, Balikpapan. I've been to IKN. Uh, and, uh, uh, we planted trees there in the, in the one month ago. <laughs> Yeah, I was involved in the cultural activities with people from several countries from all over the planet. And to support the green initiative of the new capital, we planted trees in a, around the north kilometer point of the uh, IKN. Yeah. So several countries have experienced the transfer of capital. And I think that to have visited Jakarta and have visited Ikan, I think is a very good initiative. And um, the promise that I've made that the, the, uh, the city shall be a forest city and a smart city shall just be fulfilled. It, if all the promise are like uh, implemented, I don't think there will be any problem. And yeah, I'm really positive about the, that issue. <laughs> But my concern is that the Ikan city is really on top of a mountain. So when we are on the highway from Balikpapan to Samarinda, we, we leave the highway, then we just start climbing, climbing. And the place is really uh, a forest. So the development of the city will destroy part of the forest. And we know that on top of the mountain is like a water catchment. And the the cutting cutting down all the trees with like uh will be a problem for the water um water supply for people living down and uh, the rivers may be affected and the population in the valley will also be affected. So I think that is one part of the concern that can be taken into account for that city. Thank you. What is your name again? Nanda, okay. Thank you, Nanda. Uh, good morning, Dr. Ari. Uh, my name is Abu and I'm from Pakistan. And for me, I would say it would be very great for the development of Indonesia to relocate the capital city from Jakarta to Kalimantan. As um, in my country, uh, the capital city was Karachi for 25 years. But after the uh, they relocate to another city called Islamabad, to the center of the country. So there are some reasons they have shifted just because Karachi was um, to one side of the country. It was not the center of. So it was hard from for some people who go there because most of the offices and um, embassies um, were there. So if the capital city is in the center, so everyone can easily approach the capital city. And I'm very positive. And I hope it, obviously, you will face some, uh, you will face some uh, troubles. But um, lately, consequently, 
uh, you will get the benefit a lot of benefit because uh, i've watched some documentaries about jakarta jakarta is drowning maybe after <laughs> i'm not sure what after 50 or 60 years jakarta would be like uh, another sea because it's drowning so it's better to ship it as soon as possible yeah so i'm very positive and hope we will see the next capital city of indonesia kalimantan in 2040 and it would be more beautiful and more well organized because my capital city now it's i would say one of the 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 iconic capital city which does not have a uh, traffic can you imagine just because they made it when you made the capital city so you organize everything the roads are very wide and the building are organized but for jakarta it was the picket capital city from from the past so the things are really uh, disorganized yeah so that's a very good thing thank you abu abu right uh, yeah yeah thank you thank you for the positive thinking and i also hope so <clears throat> but then some people still think like how are we going to govern the frontiers like frontiers is always expanding i will i will talk about this uh, later a bit and what will what are we going to govern the impact uh social impact and uh, environmental impact especially because the economic impact is obvious and it is expected yeah but then the environmental and social impact it is sometimes only considered or only expected in the plan area but then sometimes uh, the beyond the plan area it is something is happening and uh, we cannot control anymore that is because maybe you know uh, is kalimantan or kalimantan as a whole is the important it has important function especially the forest ecosystem and it is the lung of the world some people say that because we still have fast uh, forest areas there and also we have a lot of vulnerable ecosystem that is peatland mangrove areas which is habitats for endemic species orangutan uh proboscis monkey and yeah hornbill that is only well, i don't remember everything but endemic species we have like 3000 endemic species and various groups of people so we have migrants and i mm, some people say indigenous people but maybe some people also say local people because we are we are mixed together so we don't know which is indigenous and which is not indigenous but local people let's say but then local people we have also different groups like different groups different access of information different access to natural resources different access to education different access to economic uh, uh let's say capital so and they control the urbanization in the plan area but then like in outside the plan area we still don't know so it could be because then the new new capital city will be the new economic center will attract more migrants i think totally not like indonesia used to have like or still is uh, 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 trans migration program that is a migration planned migration organized by the government so supported migrant but now like if there is uh new capital or new economic center people will of course will go there voluntarily it's like it's just like jakarta people go to jakarta because there is 
opportunities. There are opportunities to have like a better livelihood, better yeah, job, better school, better yeah, something like that. So and like uh, you mentioned about the water, of course, then the what urbanization or urbanized water. Like for example, now most people use the water, of course, for drinking water and for uh, cooking and everything. But then they also use water for agriculture, for example, for food production, for uh, transportation, for other things. But then now like next year will be like 1.6 million people will come to the new capital city that those are the uh, government officer. And now if you've been there, have you seen the dam? The Nanda, have you seen the dam? The, the Spaku Samoy and in Spaku dam? for uh, drinking water production. Yeah. Those water, that water, will be used uh, as a drinking water for the people in the new ICAT and the, the plan area, the government officer. And if the water is diverted to the, for this, then that means, so, the total amount of water in the world is the same. Yeah. And if some water is diverted for other things, that means the other things should reduce, right? So now that people are producing, uh, using water also for food production, rice field, oil palm, rubber, cassava, everything, other things, then this it will. Uh, also, the water for this production, food production, will decrease because it, some of them use for drinking water in the dam. So this, and for whom? For the people in the city, not in the rural area. And, but then those people also need food, right? How, how? How do they, how, how are they going to uh, fulfill the food if the food production is also decreasing in the area, yeah, in the trade? So that's, uh, that's, that's the complication. And I guess, hopefully, the government already has a so, uh, solution for this, but that is in our research. Those kind of things we want to see or we want to follow, like how the dynamics of this uh, complexity. We are not judging this is good or bad, but then how the process is going and uh, how could we help uh, to find a better solution for, for a more sustainable, urbanization in that region <clears throat> and our focus today I think strengthening rural urban linkages for sustainable landscape transformation okay some concept here frontiers I, I, I mentioned uh, this word several times but maybe it is still unclear what front is uh, for, for some people. So frontiers is the concept, of course, it is really American uh, concept. If you know the Wild West, yeah? So that is the really American frontiers because here, so Frederick Jackson Turner, have you read the book? Yeah, it's too old or it's not interesting. <laughs> no, but this is very interesting. If you learn about the history of America, how they uh, develop, yeah, how they develop the countries uh, and how how this frontier shapes the civilization in America. Yeah. 
the frontiers is i don't know if you know like a movies like little house in the priory or bonanza or i don't know it's the old movie yeah i'm old <laughs> i feel i'm old <laughs> so frontiers existence of an area of free land it is continuous its continuous recession and the advance of American settlement was what explain American development. So this, like, in this book, it says that it is beyond the institution uh, that shaped the America, the civilization in America. But it is the frontiers that shape the America, like today. Yeah, you can you can uh, uh, you can read the book, the whole book. But then, so the thing, the frontier is a primitive economic in America. So primitive economic, and they try to integrate with the complexity of the city life, like the the, the imagination is the imagination is that. The complexity of city life is the modern economic, something like that. So that's why uh, everything is consolidated, settlement is consolidated, industry, and yeah, everything. But that is the imagination of yeah American dreams, something like that. Yeah. Hmm. But then. The frontiers are contested because there is no free land or limitless resources. Land is limited, and uh, resources are also limited. Yeah. So then, encounters between different groups of people with different land tenure and condition. And resource exploitation is could lead or mostly most of the time lead to land conflicts and different culture, decrease of modernity, livelihood, values. Yeah. So that is the frontiers here, what we mean. So we want to follow the frontier and frontiers is always expanding until it cannot until the resource is finished and it is closed or it is become industrial not frontiers anymore it is become a city and then not frontiers anymore and the concept here we use is socio-ecological system or landscape approach which mean here we see that uh, the social system and ecological system are interrelated. And the, the outcome of this interaction will uh, influence the behavior of those systems. Yeah. And will also influence the environment and social, economic, and political uh, setting. This is this uh, interaction uh, between them will shape the behavior of the whole things here. And that's why the rural urban linkages also important here because rural and urban areas, it, it is not binary or it, it is, they are not binary and they are not isolated. It is a place of exchange and socioeconomic interaction, and it is a continuum. And the the linkages between rural and urban areas will improve the resilience of the people of the community, individual or community, a neighborhood or institution or a system to cope positively with rapid onset shock or significant and protective sources of stress. 
Yeah. So those are the concepts we are using in this research. And methods, we involve uh, biophysical surveys and social survey and also uh, death study. Yeah, this is release measuring the mangrove uh, tree. Yeah, it is uh, Warda interviewing people. Okay, then we talk about the critical factor. Now, this is the position of East Kalimantan in achieving SDGs. 2020, after the announcement of the relocation of capital city, it still has the, everything is green except climate action, still red. Yeah, this is the, something we need to think about how to deal with this or how to, uh, yeah. We need to work on this. And here is the frontier expansion in East Kalimantan. Forest forces the forest dweller. They they do like shifting cultivation and after that the mining come and timber harvesting come and forest plantation like oil palm, rubber and everything. And then now Ibu Kota Nusantara. All these activities, they are still coexist together in East Kalimantan in different in different space, yeah. In in East Kalimantan, but different space, different uh, activities, but they are still there together. Those activities then create landscape dynamics, for example, forest loss, quite high deforestation in 2021. It is decreasing from, to, if we look at 2025 to 2021, it is decreasing. Yeah, 2017, 2020, it is more than 100,000 hectare per year, but then it is it is still high, but it is decreasing. Disturbed forest area by oil palm plantation, also more than, that means oil plantation inside the state forest area. It is still quite high. Forest fire, especially in degraded mineral land and peatland. Environmental vulnerability index in former mining, coastal, and urban areas. And the distance to primary road had the strongest negative influence on habitat used by wildlife. That means the development of the roads of the uh, could influence the presence of the uh, wildlife, especially when the road has passed or uh, passed through the habitat of the wildlife. And of course, increasing competition for remaining lands and climate change could intensify the impact also. This is the land cover change in Babulu, one village uh, we are working on. This is actually the foot pocket of the area, of the region. But then if you see here, uh, there are, this is from 2012 to 2020. And here we see the pink oil palm plantation is, has been increasing. But then this oil palm plantation replaced the rice field and uh, the rice field and other dry land agriculture. It is okay, but one minute, I know, because we already discussed, I combine already with discussion. 
Hmm. So yeah, there are areas, food production areas converted into oil palm plantation. And also I think settlement is also increasing, but this year is uh, still quite uh, settlement. Yeah. This, yeah, increasing. So yeah, this dynamics is part of the uh, part of the development, of course. Infrastructure is also increasing, and yeah, it is for sure the forest, uh, shrubland, shrub yeah, shrub has been converted a lot to uh, oil palm plantation. So this is one village. We we visited several villages, and we are also doing this analysis for the whole uh, thirty-two uh, sub water set. So we will see. And indigenous people, marginalization several many times from Western exploration, like during the Dutch uh, uh, colony, yeah, they already exp explored the oil mining and timber harvesting and transmigration forest plantation, oil palm plantation, and Ibu Kota Negara. But then, these indigenous people, they also have different, get different impact. Like some group of people, they have better access to, they have better access to uh, resources and some other, not. so the marginalization, the level of marginalization also different. And intensified migration, of course. Until now, East Kalimantan has been the third most important destination of interprovincial migration for many decades. And the flow, the last, in 2024, later, the 1.6 million government officers, they are knowledgeable migrants and they could at the layer of marginalization because people need to compete with them for certain uh what is it uh for jobs for yeah like for example uh people with high skill let's say high skill migrant will come to that area so and with diploma with certificate with everything and yeah this will add another layer of marginalization and of course it will increase pressure on land and natural resources because those who are out compet mostly they will go to the forest and will yeah but how, how much forest and they will come go back to the natural resources also because that is the most easiest uh, or they will also people with a lot of money will will accumulate lands and natural resources as a what is it investment or as a yeah because now also I see there the phenomenon of land banking. So people buy lands not to use or not to build a house or not to, you know, but just to wait until the price is increasing and then they sell it. So speculation. Because the price of like, I went there last year and within one year, the price increase like uh, yeah incredible hundred times within one year within one one month could be like ten times higher speculation huh. how could we promote sustainable landscape trans transition within this context yeah 
So we should acknowledge the multifunctionality of landscape. For example, by enriching disturbed forests in the forming mining, former mining, coastal and urban areas to create agroforestry landscape or agroecosystem. So people do not only uh, like Nanda, you also uh, come to the, uh, I suppose, the biggest nursery, two million seedlings per month. No, in Mentawir or not? No. Yeah, the government uh, already initiated the biggest uh, nursery, like two million seedlings uh, can produce two million seedlings per month because the government plan to develop. Uh, we will start the rehabilitate. We will start the development with rehabilitation. That's that is the 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 president mentioned that during the opening or the opening of the uh, nursery. And uh, yeah. So within the agroforestry landscape, that means, uh, yeah, not only industrial industrial plantation, but also they will enrich with native species. Uh, like I already saw, like uh, around the ground zero monument, they already planted the purposes uh, three species, native species like. Diptrocarpase and uh, everything, and we need to restore degraded mineral and peatland to reduce fire and other environmental related disaster risk, and create conservation corridors for wildlife. Yeah, uh, we did the survey of wildlife, the presence of wildlife, for example, the monkey, bekantan, proboscis monkey. Uh, especially the flex species. And yeah, we know that uh, we are now analyzing whether their habitat is overlap with the with the uh, development plan or the master plan, or we can suggest a corridor, conservation corridor for their height, their white, their habitat, yeah. And then second, we need to enhance the rural urban linkages because it uh, it could ensure food and water security and environmental services for the not only for the city but also for the people outside the city and to ensure the achievement of the national determined contribution in 2030 and to ensure the access for vulnerable groups yeah and to leave no one behind like the motto of the sustainable development goals so oh there are pictures we did the survey here in the mangrove areas and also interview people and uh, different groups of people here. So thank you. If you have any question or further discussion, we'll be happy. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ari. And uh, Let's move to the Q&A session. For the first opportunity, we will open three questions. Please raise your hand. Yes. Don't forget to mention your name and also where are you from? Uh, hello, thank you for the opportunity in the space. I'm Emma from Indonesia and I want to ask you, uh, how did IKN uh, got their permission to build a new capital city in the Borneo? Because 
uh, it must be really complicated because in my town in Semarang, we also have a Pangaron forest, which is one of the forests that we have to protect. So when uh, we build our uh, tall, uh, we have to build the overpass that uh, so that we can uh, we don't destroy the forest and uh, how did uh, IKN got their permit and uh, do, do you guys uh, have uh, some plan so um, the forest plot is not destroyed as much as that. Thank you. Thank you. What's your name again? Uh, Emma. Emma. Thank you for your question. Yeah. The relocation of the capital city is a government, central government project. It is already uh, uh, what is formalized in the law, undang-undang or law number two, law number three, 2020, 20, 22, 22, 22nd. So it is by law, it is a national program. So you don't need permit. So it is policy of the national government that the capital city will be relocated to Kalimantan. And uh, yeah, I think it is uh, now in the in the in the law they have master plan all the all the uh, guidelines or uh, let's say the the highlights of this IKN, what is going to be and something like that is already in the law. You can also check it, yeah. But then that is guidelines, like, uh, yeah. It, uh, in the field, there is still uh, room for change. And, and yeah, they, they did all this uh, environment assessment, uh, like, uh, infrastructure plan and everything and yeah uh, your question is how to get permit yeah the permit and uh, to ikn uh, have some plan to yeah um, there is plan it. yeah mm -mm. there is master plan which is very complete different aspect like uh, biophysic infrastructure social aspect everything and the permit, of course, it is already in the law. So it, yeah. And IKN now is, uh, there is Otorita IKN, OIKN. So it is already, the IKN area is already outside the uh, East Kalimantan province area. It's already excluded from the uh, East Kalimantan the new RTRWP or the new the new spatial plan of the East Kalimantan province already exclude uh, the the uh, IKN area because now the IKN area is under uh, managed by the OIKN Otorita IKN. Yeah, do you have follow up question? Oh, okay, thank you. So IKN have their own LTRW plan for yeah they are doing that they have master plan already it is more detailed than RTRW they have master plan but now it is uh the they are doing or implementing the master plan of course in the implementation there is always adjustment yeah because the boundary with the other for example with Penajam Pasir Utara and with Kutai Kartanegara is also uh, not clear and clean. There is still in the field, they still have to discuss which is the boundary in the field. Of course, in the map is ready, yeah? but then like some details, they have to also get the approval from the community there, from the kecamatan, from the village, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for answering. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Other you. Questions? We still have two more questions. Uh, please, hands up. Raise your hand. Okay. Malaysia. Right. 
Hello once again, good morning. My name is Alex from University of Malaysia, Sabah. So knowing that um, the next capital city of Indonesia would be in Kalimantan called uh, IKN. So um, first of all, before I jump into the, the question, I would like to say, uh, yeah, thank you for the uh, what the, <laughs> the presentation. That was nice. And I had lots of information that from the uh, presentation. And the relocation of the capital city of Indonesia is, um, I think it get uh, it gives so much benefits to the country as uh, as well as to the neighboring countries uh, like Malaysia and um, Brunei as it would develop the nation uh, for uh, the East Malaysia and also Brunei as well. But the question is, uh, my one of my concern is. Um, the Borneo, uh, Borneo is the third largest island in the world and is also known as the lung of the world. So we have this agreement called Heart of Borneo. So what I had read before that the Heart of Borneo kind of like against this um, relocation of the um, capital city of Indonesia. So um, they said this would disrupt the, um, the, in, the land of indigenous people as what uh, just um, uh, presented before and yeah uh, is there any like um, how to say um, what is your view uh, from the point of uh, what is your view and how would you like uh, what's your opinion about the opinions given by the head of Borneo yeah thank you thank you what's your name Alex thank you Alex yeah Sabah is very close so you don't need, uh, so now you have to go to Jakarta. Yeah, it's uh, how many hours? Ah, you go to Kuala Lumpur and then, yeah. Maybe next time you just go to, yeah. You can also go by car, I think. <laughs> it's not so far, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, that's what I mentioned in the beginning. Why it is contested? It is uh, uh, again criticism. Of course, there are people who support. They see all of these economic benefits, and of course, there will be. But then there are uh, people uh, who also concerned about all these uh, uh, endemic species and. One of them is the heart of Borneo, of course. And uh, <clears throat> other people, other groups are also contested about the uh, indigenous people, like uh, their rights to resources, their light, right to lands and something like that. And yeah, uh, I think it is good that the as a, you know, like to see this dynamics because if, if people say, okay, agree, everybody is agree, this is not good. Yeah, this is uh, because then we become uh, more critical to, to what the government decide. And at least now with the, uh, they consider uh, the forestity uh, concept, they adopt this forestity concept. So, to minimize the impact on the environment, something like that. And also, uh, they also consider all these, uh, uh, what is it? <clears throat> a social and uh, social impact. Like they try to talk with different group of people. Yeah. Although also it is not ideal, but then, uh, yeah, at least, they try to, and in for our research, it is interesting to see the dynamics of this process, and the and the impact, and how they deal or stakeholders deal with this uh, situation, like how to respond and and one of the uh, uh, specific objective uh, in our research is to build the capacity of the local uh, uh, local research infrastructure and also uh, 
like a, to give stakeholder platform to provide stakeholder platform which is the students will or are the 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 most important component in this so you you can also join if you like join uh, with exchange i don't know exchange or study here and then join in the in the community services and join in this program because we have every year we send students to that region and also like the community i think well i visited last week uh, to this uh, student community services the community they they feel i think they feel more comfortable to talk with students instead of with us uh, maybe we are too old or <laughs> i don't know yeah so yeah uh yeah it's my opinion yeah yes and we and thank you thank you and we still have time for a last one more question right yes Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm Li Ting from Malaysia too. So before the relocation of the capital city to Kalimantan and before the human disturbance to occur, do the government, particularly the forestry department in Indonesia, uh, gazette new high conservation value areas as protected area? Uh, because in my opinion, the urbanization actually will increase the forest fragmentation as well the as well as the forest age and which also increase the accessibility of the public to the inner part of the forest. Thank you. Thank you. What is your name? Uh, Li Ting. 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 From? Malaysia. Malaysia. Okay. Yes. They map everything. Like, uh, also got the map about the HCV, uh, HCV, a high conservation value. And they try to and that's why they try to uh, uh, make they already propose corridor for conservation and but until now they did not uh, publish yet like there will be like north corridor and south corridor but they don't publish yet where exactly this corridor because they still have like i mentioned before boundary uh, they have to uh, uh, to make sure that the boundary is uh, fix first and we also uh, uh we got the map from them also about this uh, and yeah i think they have concern about that uh, and yeah what we want to know is let's see how it will be implemented in the field yeah in reality yeah any other okay. questions maybe we still have question more one question. Sorry now. Oh yeah, from Professor, from our Professor. Professor Taka, professor Taka. please. Please. So, thank you very much for nice presentation. So the, I think so the uh, EKM, the Ibukutan Santara is uh, now hot topic in Indonesia. And today, so that I got worried about the current situation and some challenge of EKMs. So I have the two, two questions. And yeah, and my, my first question is about Jakarta, future Jakarta. So yeah, government already decided to relocate the capital city from Jakarta to Nusantara. But I have so the, the government uh, want to keep the, some function of Jakarta, some function like uh, yeah, economic, economic function in Jakarta and uh, governmental function in Nusantara. So that's why so the, yeah, I want to know so the, what is the future role of Jakarta in Indonesia? This is my first question. And the second question is now, so Indonesian government promote Hornet 2030, so Hornet Sync 2030. So the, this is a, like an ambitious activities and the government to combat the forest from the emission to the uh, by the 2030. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, so if we develop the yeah, some areas, so that it means so that uh, occur the deforestation. That's why so how, how so the yeah the uh, Ibukota and Santa policy uh, are to associate with Hornet Sync Twenty Thirty. So if we yeah, uh, this is uh, yeah my question. Thank you very much. 
I think for the first question, uh, the function of Jakarta when we relocate the capital city. Uh, yeah, I think you are from Malaysia. Uh, who are from Malaysia? Yeah, you. Oh, many people. One, two, three, four. Oh, whoa, whoa, many. So maybe it is like Putrajaya and Kuala Lumpur. So the Putra, of course, it's not so far, Putrajaya and Kuala Lumpur, yeah. But Putrajaya is the center of the, uh, let's say, uh, government administration, and Kuala Lumpur is the business uh, city. It's also like Amsterdam and The Hague. The Hague is the the center for the uh, um, government offices. Uh, yeah. Uh, and Amsterdam is the uh, business center. And I think uh, Jakarta will be the remind the business center while the, uh, all these uh, uh, government administration will be in the in the in the IKN. Because I think Jakarta is just too big. It. Uh, it is not, um, yeah. And I I understand the government already already calculate the asset of the government offices, and they will plan uh, will will make a plan what they are going to do with all these building offices after they move to IKN. So they already do the inventory. So I think they have some plan, but uh, we still don't know. Yeah. It is also interesting to see, like uh, how this, uh, yeah, how 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 it will be after the relocation of uh, uh, capital city to IKN. But yeah, I think learning from Kuala Lumpur and Amsterdam, yeah, it it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't make them um, it grow anyway. Yeah, it it still it will be there. I think and only uh, maybe some burden, you know, yeah, will will move to the capital city, yeah. Yeah. So now, so Japan also, yeah, many function are concentrated in Tokyo, Tokyo own. So mm -hmm. that's why, so the Japanese government also, yeah, try to uh, relocate some governmental function to the uh, the other areas. Mm -hmm. But I think so far, so not so successful. That's why, yeah, maybe I, we can run from. Santa project. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah. Okay, about the Volu, yeah, I think uh, the East Kalimantan they are promoting green economy since 2015 or something, and I understand that this year they already got like uh, payment from the World Bank for the uh, carbon forest carbon program and but what we see is that now is Kalimantan is still like 50 percent depend on the oil and gas uh, yeah I think they are going there but they are not there <laughs> but the Kalimantan I understand is Kalimantan becoming one of the priority region for the Folu medicine and they have many programs on that. So hopefully they can achieve the goals. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, thank thank you. you very much for yeah. the explanation. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Professor Taka, for your question and will be the last question of this session. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to uh, at the last session and I would like to thank all participants who have shown their enthusiasm regarding this topic. Uh, to Dr. Ari Susanti, thank you for your amazing lecture in this morning. Very interesting topic to learn on behalf of the Forestry UGM summer course, managing forestry landscape and forest dependent communities to bridge the future, learning across governance regimes, Thank you all for making time to join us here today. Now, I would like to return the time and place to the Master of Ceremony. Thank you so much. I'm Abdul. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Thank you so much, Dr. Ari, and also thank you so much, Mr. Abdul, uh, that already have been made a um, comprehensive presentation, also interactive discussion. That's all for our first topic of this day. And before we're going to proceed to the COVID break session, please, all ladies and gentlemen, rise from your seat uh, and move uh, in front of here to take picture together with Dr. Ari as our appreciation of this first topic today. Okay, uh, please all of the participants rise from your seat and take a picture together in front of here. Recording stopped. <laughs>